the Navia line. I am Elfan. The boat will be departing imminently. Please do not stick your head, hands, or other body parts outside the boat. The Aquabus operator is not responsible for any accidents or injuries resulting from doing so. Also, please remember to buy the Steambird, though I don't read it myself. The destination of the current tour is Erinias. Points of interest worth visiting include the Fountain of Lucene and the Opera Epiquest. If you look to the left in the direction we are currently traveling, you will see the famous Fontaine Research Institute up in the sky. An experiment gone wrong turned new sightseeing opportunity. Human ingenuity truly is a wondrous thing. Approaching our final destination. Please be sure to bring all your personal belongings with you as you disembark. Even though I will take any forgotten items to the lost and found, the paperwork is rather annoying as melting hands are not suitable for grasping pens. Please be careful when disembarking. It has been my honor to be your tour guide this trip. Thank you.
Take it easy. Take it easy. Bless us with a bright and healthy child. We pray. I don't know why you always feel the need to ask so much. I'll be happy as long as our child is healthy and lives a peaceful life. <laughs> I guess if there are, kid, then there's no doubt they'll turn out smart. Maybe this is one of the customs in Fontaine. There sure are a lot of couples here. Vashay. What's wrong? Vashay. Vashay. No, Paima didn't say anything. Are you hearing things? Welcome to the Fountain of Lucene. All the water flowing through Fontaine converges here. It's customary for newlyweds to come here and wish for children. Ah! Oh, Annette! You scared Paimon! Why did you get here? Mm, when he asked me to wait here for you, remember? Ah, right. What do you mean? There are a lot of people here right now. Huh? Hey, you're not trying to scare Paimon, are you? Hmm, I see. I might be able to tell you something that could help explain the voice you heard. In fact, you might not be imagining things at all. I suspect that what you heard is a result of your hypersensitivity to the hydro element. Others in my family have had similar experiences. It's because of her sensitivity to the hydro element? But what would hearing a voice have to do with elemental power? When do you cry, Paimon? Wait. What? What does that have to do with anything? Just answer me. When do you cry? Uh, when Paimon's really sad? Oh, and when Paimon's super happy. Oh, and also when Paimon's really, really scared. Then you should understand that tears contain your most intense emotions. Like I just mentioned, the Fountain of Lucene is where all the flowing water in Fontaine converges. Even the tears that fall to the ground will eventually gather here. So maybe what you heard was the intense emotion coming from someone's tears. So, what did the voice say? Huh. If you were hearing their emotions, then Paimon wonders what happened to them. Rather than worrying about them, we should worry about my brother first. Don't let that calm look of his fool you. He tends to get pretty nervous just before a performance. So chatting with Linny might help him relax a little before he goes on stage. Oh, right. That makes sense. Let's go in and see Linny.
Traveler and Paimon, good to see you. I knew you two would come. Are you kidding? We want to miss it for the world! We've been looking forward to it! <laughs> I can tell, judging by how early you've arrived. But you're actually right on time. The audience still hasn't started entering the venue yet, which means now is the perfect chance for us to take you to the best seats in the house. Wait just a moment, I'll fetch the tickets. The Opera House has assigned seating, so you always have to make reservations. I've already reserved your seats, and here are your tickets. Ooh, front row seats! Thanks, Linny! Don't mention it. There's no need to keep thanking me. Hey, Linny! Could you come over here and take a look at this? Oh, I'll be right there. Seems there's an issue with the stage props over there. That's Cal, my assistant, calling me. I'll go lend him a hand. Yeah, we'll just go to our seats. You go ahead, Linny. Take it easy. conversation with the person next to us since we're sitting together and the rest of the place is practically empty still it's kind of awkward if we don't say anything oh, you little... <laughs> of course you put this on Paimon excuse me I did not realize you felt awkward I am terribly sorry I would be perfectly happy to chat with you if that is what you would like so, you heard all of that, did ya? <laughs> Boy, you sure have good ears. Paimon thought she was keeping her voice down. Uh, wait, that's not it. Paimon's... sorry. Um, Paimon's the one who was being rude, talking under her breath like that. Uh, so, let's talk, but, uh, what should we talk about? Uh, oh, Paimon's got it. You're also here early and sitting in the front. Are you a friend of Linny's too? A friend, you say? Well, if Mr. Linny would like to be my friend, I would be more than happy to reciprocate. Oh, so you're not friends with Linny then? Oh, this is getting more awkward by the second. <laughs> ah, uh, Paimon nearly forgot to make her introduction. Nice to meet you. Paimon is Paimon, and this is the Traveler. We just arrived in Vaudane. It is an honor to meet you two. I have heard of your deeds across Tevat. And as required by proper etiquette, I will also introduce myself. I am... Oh, Monsieur Nervillette. What an honor it is to have you here to see my show. Ah, Mr. Linney. I should say it is in fact an honor for me to see your performance in person. Wait, Nervilette? Could he be... Hmm? I saw you all chatting just now, but it seems you still don't know who Monsieur Nervilette is. Allow me to introduce you to Fontaine's Chief Justice. That seat is always reserved for him. It wouldn't be too much to say that he's the symbol of justice and honesty here in Fontaine. Being so rude just now. Paimon had no idea you were such an important person. No offense taken. Being Chief Justice is merely what I do for work. 
Nearly every person has their usual reserved seat, so I'm not so special, really. And by the way, I should probably let you know, even though I would prefer not to, there's someone sitting up there in the VIP seats that has been striking a pose for quite a while now. I believe she is trying to give you a most elegant and impressive first impression. So I think you should take notice of her sooner rather than later, otherwise she may become... flustered. <laughs> huh? Oh! It's Farina, the Hydro Archon. Huh. She sure has a smug and satisfied look on her face. Guess she has no idea that you saw right through her act. Very good. That is for the best. No need to pay her any more attention. We may now enjoy the show. Huh? So is this what things are like between the Chief Justice and the Hydro Archon? All right. Please wait just a moment longer. I've pretty much finished my preparations, and the performance will start as soon as the audience has made their way to their seats. Yay! The show is finally about to start! Ooh, boy, I can hardly wait! Paimon's never seen a real live magic show before! Ooh! They're dimming the lights! The show must be starting! Hmm. Sorry, Paimon will try to stay quiet. <laughs> Welcome, one and all, to the Opera Epicles. I am the star of today's show, Linny. And over here is my sister, Lynette, who will be working as my wonderful assistant. Please, let's give her a warm welcome. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I know she may seem to be a little sleepy right now, but that's just a sign that she's nervous. Whatever. Now, some of you may be thinking, two vision holders who can freely manipulate elemental powers performing magic is not true magic at all. So, I would like to take a moment to assure you that elemental powers will have nothing to do with what you will witness on the stage today. Both Lynette and myself have removed our visions for the show. That way, even the gods won't be able to help us. Oh, good point. That's what makes the show real magic. Now, without further ado, let the show begin. Lynette will now exit the stage to make some preparations. I know you might miss her, but don't worry. She'll be coming right back on stage momentarily. Perhaps in an unexpected way. I'm sure she'll be stealing the spotlight soon enough. Oh, and before I forget, there's one more thing I should say. You never know what can happen in the blink of an eye. A magician's greatest skill is making things disappear or appear. The possibilities are endless. isn't what you came for. These little tricks, you've seen them all before. So it's time for something truly extraordinary, don't you think? This one's a little tricky. Using this water tank, I shall make my sister vanish completely. Right before your very eyes! <sighs> it's actually quite simple. She'll just turn into air bubbles and float right out of the top. I 
I told them to check all the props carefully. With the lid on, even air can't escape. An amateur magician would be getting very nervous right around now. <laughs> Luckily, it's me on stage, so let me show you what a true virtuoso can do. Lynette, are you still there? Don't go too far. We don't want to use up all our magic. Hi, I'm back. Uh huh? If we could see easily through his tricks, then that would mean that his skills are still lacking. To appreciate magic, you should focus on the show happening on stage, rather than getting caught up in trying to see that which has been intentionally hidden. Ah, guess you're right. Hyman couldn't believe her eyes when Lynette reappeared. Amazing! Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I'm glad you enjoyed that performance. But our magical journey has only just begun. I've prepared even more astonishing surprises for everyone here. The magic of transformation and disappearance can go far beyond what you've just seen. I'm sure many of you are thinking that escaping the water tank was impressive enough. But Lynette is still my assistant after all. In which case, I have ample time to make all necessary preparations. So, for my next trick, I will require the participation of one lucky audience member. Please, if my assistants could bring out the magical boxes now... There are two boxes, and only two boxes. One is here, and one is there in the aisle among the audience. I'm sure many of our clever audience members have already guessed our next magic trick. <laughs> A swap! Our lucky audience member and I will each enter a magic box. After one minute, we will each emerge from the opposite box. Now please, everyone pay very close attention to the box you see here. Don't give me any chance to make a move. Wow! How's he gonna do this? Hey, do you think this is all magic tricks, or does Lenny have actual superpowers? The lucky audience member will be generated by this random number selector. It selects numbers entirely at random. Even I don't know who will be chosen to participate. Now then, let's begin. Oh, uh, let me see... Oh, row 7C3! Congratulations! You now have the chance to experience magic firsthand for an entire minute. Please, come forward. My assistant will take you beside the magic box. I'm sorry, it might be a little cramped inside, but no need to feel nervous. We've carefully arranged everything for you to be as comfortable as possible. You don't need to do anything, but no matter what strange things may happen, don't come out of the box. If the magic is interrupted, who knows where you might end up. You might even find yourself in the Fortress of Meripede. Oh, <laughs> okay. All right. Before I enter the magic box, there is one more thing I need to ask the audience to do. Could you all give me a countdown? Like this. 60, 59, 58. Just keep counting down. You can go a little faster or slower if you like. I won't be able to see anything in the pitch black box, so I'll be relying on your voices to know when time is up. Oh, and no tricks now. If you quickly count from 60 in just 30 seconds, then I'll be in a tough spot. Ooh! Paimon kinda wants to count faster after hearing him say that! <laughs> 
No, no, that won't do. I can see it in your eyes. You still can't be trusted. Let's practice together. Come on, repeat after me. 60, 59, 58. 60, 59, 58! That's right, perfect. Keep it going. All right, I'll see you all on the other side once you've finished counting. 54, 53, 52? Huh? Why aren't you counting, Nervalet? I am counting in my head. I think things are exciting enough in here as it is. Merely a consequence of my identity and personality. Do not worry about me. Just enjoy the show. Oh, all right. You look so serious that Paimon thought you might be feeling uncomfortable or something. 40, 39, 38! Mr. Linny, are you all right in there? Is everything ready? Yes, I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm just double-checking the direction of the magic. She would be a disaster if we get sent to the wrong places. For example, mid-air right above the audience. Even though he's saying that, Lenny doesn't seem nervous at all. <gasps> what was that noise? Did you hear it too? Not sure. Anyway, it doesn't seem like anyone's worried about it. 25! 24! 23! What's wrong, Mr. Linny? I can still hear you moving in there. I seem to have accidentally knocked over a decoration. I'm trying to fix it, but it's pitch black in here. I can't tell left from right. N never mind the decorations! There's no time for that. The show is what's important. No, that's unacceptable. I want my show to be perfect. Don't worry, we still have 20 seconds. Hear them counting? 19, 18, 17! Uh, it seems things aren't quite going as planned. I apologize, everyone. It feels like you're all starting to count faster, but that's all right. I know it can be tiring to do such a long countdown. 10 seconds and change is still plenty of time. 10! Almost there now. Eight. Whew. Swapping two people is harder work than you might think. Even a master magician like me can't guarantee I'll get it right the first time. <laughs> hey, wait! Is this the back one? I can't tell. They both look the same inside. Huh? No, that's not it. I'll try again. Seven! Hey, slow down! Six. Honestly! Five! Four! Three! Uh, whoops! Two. That doesn't count! now, right? What happened? Oh no. Maybe this isn't part of the show. The girl was still in that box, right? This performance is over. Medical staff with me. Guards, secure the scene and detain all the performers. Seal the exits. No one is allowed in or out at this time. <laughs> yes, that's right. If this was just an accident, then we must investigate the cause. But if this was all part of some scheme, then... then those accountable will not escape the judgment of the God of Justice! No need to be alarmed, you two. We'll get to the bottom of this soon enough. Uh, 
Unfortunately, the person who is in the magic box has been pronounced dead. His name was Cowell, one of the assistants in Linny's magic troupe. Apparently, the fireworks on stage ignited the ropes that were suspending the water tank, which then caused the tank to fall onto the stage. As of now, we are still not sure why we found Cowell in the box, rather than the guest from the audience. And after an initial search of the area, the guards have confirmed that the girl is nowhere to be found. It appears that this incident was not merely some mishap with the performance. And there are many indications that it is connected with the case of the serial disappearances of young women. Uh, the... the serial disappearances case? Huh? That's the case that Charlotte mentioned before! <laughs> I know... I know the truth. I can see through the whole thing. Really, using such a shallow and obvious mystery as his finale, did he really underestimate us that badly? I say that our powerful magician, Mr. Linny, is now the prime suspect for the serial disappearances case. Huh? Why me? This whole thing was an accident. No, oh, this all occurred during your magic show, did it not? The missing girl disappeared after being chosen, did she not? The deceased is one of your assistants, is he not? Now that I think about it, that whole speech about magicians making things disappear was nothing more than a provocation, a bald-faced challenge. That can't be right. How can Lenny do this? He was in the box on the stage the entire time. We can even hear his voice. Besides, before the show, he told us that he would like to catch the criminal behind the disappearances. He couldn't possibly mean catching himself! Save discussion for a later time, please. Lady Farina, may I assume that your comments just now constitute an accusation against Mr. Linny and his associates, and that you are pressing charges? Huh? I just think that he... well, I, uh... I think it might be a little early to talk about formally pressing charges. But what Lady Farina said just now makes perfect sense. Looks like she's gonna personally deliver justice. A kidnapping and murder carried out under the cover of a magic show. Lady Farina said it all. <laughs> uh, I mean, of course, my dear people. But what excites me even more than the obvious truth before our eyes is the opponent I'll be facing. That's right. I mean you, Traveler. You'll support Linny, won't you? After all, he was the one who helped you the first time we met. <laughs> then there's no problem at all. You know, the Traveler and I already had a duel the first time we met. But with Linny's help, our little duel ended in a draw. <laughs> but draws really are the most boring possible outcome. So, no more draws. Between the two of us, there must be a clear winner and loser. And what better place to hold such a riveting showdown and decide the true victor than here, on the grandest of stages, the Opera Epicles! Huh. It wasn't a draw. She obviously lost last time. I understand. Charges have now been pressed, and as such, a trial is in order. Well, Traveler, seems Lady Farina has set you in her sights. But putting her dramatic rhetoric aside for a moment, I would like to ask you, are you willing to act as Mr. Linney's attorney and defend him in this case? Very well. The trial will be held a day from now in the Opera House. Both sides may investigate the scene to build their cases and search for the truth. Linney and his troupe are all potential suspects and shall remain within the Opera House. The audience may begin to leave in an orderly fashion once they have been cleared by the guards. A day isn't that long. Let's see what kind of case this big shot outlander can build in such a short amount of time. <laughs> I'm really quite looking forward to hearing it.
sorry about everything that happened just now. Were you frightened? Of course! Who wouldn't be scared after witnessing an accident like that? Yeah, I'm a little shaken up myself. How could this happen? And poor Cal. I know you already claimed that you would defend me, but now it's just us talking. Tell me, do you think I could possibly be the murderer? Good to hear. Thank you so much for trusting me. I'm sure everyone sees me as the biggest suspect at this point. But, if you ask me, the whole thing is mysteries layered upon mysteries, such that all that's left is confusion. I don't know whether what happened there on the stage was purely an accident or not, and I don't know why poor Cal was in the box. As for how that girl chosen from the audience could suddenly disappear, I'm afraid I don't have any answers either. If someone tampered with my performance, then we need to figure out what they did. Even a skilled and knowledgeable magician like myself couldn't pull all that off in just one minute. Which is precisely why we need to investigate! As this book says, <clears throat> The impossible could not have happened. Whatever happened must have been that which is possible. Paima bought them when we were reading at the bookshop in the city earlier. Pretty cool, huh? Don't worry, Paimon used her own savings to buy them. It wasn't from our travel funds. I think they look cute on you, Paimon. You have good taste, Lynette! <laughs> <laughs> That's the right attitude. Feeling depressed isn't going to help me now. I need to get back to my normal self. But with the guards watching our every move, it's going to be especially difficult for Lynette and I to prove our own innocence. Good thing you agreed to be our attorneys. <sighs> Thanks for that. We'll be counting on you. Yes, thank you so much. We're going to start investigating. Paimon has a question first. Where did Lynette go during the performance? Ah, oh, well, I'm afraid that would involve some of our essential trade secrets as magicians. The secrets behind our magic are past saving, Linny. I suppose you're right. The truth behind our tricks is going to be important evidence that will be weighted during the trial. <sighs> Tis truly a pity. As a magician, our magic show is a work of art. We've poured countless hours and spared no effort in perfecting it. But if revealing our secrets will help you uncover the truth behind what happened, then it will be well worth it. We should go somewhere else if we're going to discuss our magic tricks. We'll go speak with the guards, and in the meantime, you can go investigate the stage and the seating areas. Alright! Let's go have a look while the investigation teams are still here! Detective Paimon is on the case! Hello, officer! How's the investigation going? Ah, uh, I see. You must be the traveler that Lady Farina mentioned. Listen, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I'd avoid getting mixed up in this whirlpool of a mess if I were you. Huh? What do you mean? Come with me and you'll see. The deceased is one of Linny's assistants, named Cowell. Even though he hadn't joined the troop long, he was hardworking and everyone generally liked him. The assistants are usually in charge of setting up and inspecting the props, as well as assisting with the show and keeping the crowd engaged. As you probably saw when you were in the audience, the water tank suddenly fell and smashed the box with Cowell inside it. This is the real mystery. We've already searched the scene and were unable to find any traces of the girl. However, if you look carefully, the box was positioned directly under the water tank. The ropes holding the tank were then burned by the pyrotechnics on stage, causing them to snap. All these factors lining up so perfectly makes it hard to see this as a mere accident. If anything, the more logical explanation is that the whole incident was intentionally planned, and Linny is the most likely person to have access to all these areas. But he doesn't have a motive! Are you both good friends of his? Uh, well, you can't say we're good friends, but 
We've known each other for a little while. So in just a short time, he was not only able to win your trust, but even convince you to act as his attorneys. I know there's no such thing as magic. The real trick of a magician is holding the audience in the palm of their hand. I've seen a lot of cases, and I can tell you that people are the least reliable kind of evidence. Sorry, I tend to be pretty straightforward. Just know that I'm warning you for your own good. Anyway, you may investigate the scene of the crime yourselves if you're curious. Who knows, maybe you'll be able to come up with some new evidence. Go ahead, have a look around. In the end, we're both after the truth. So this is the rope that broke and caused the water tank to fall. Hmm, the rope looks pretty durable. How can it be burned through so quickly by fireworks? This location has also been cordoned off because the Magic Troop members are currently considered prime suspects. The investigation team is still collecting evidence. The seats were all booked in advance, so we were able to deduce the missing woman's identity by checking the guest list. Sure, it's not like this is confidential information. We will publish it later anyway when we petition the public to help us find the missing person. Her name is Halsey. She's a painter from Fontaine who's made a bit of a name for herself. Apparently, she wasn't a regular at the Opera House, but she'd been feeling some pressure with her work lately, which made her decide to come see the Magic Show. The Magic Troop members all claim not to know her. We have looked into her social connections. It seems that she has no personal grievances or conflicts of interest with the suspects. Simply put, she wasn't related to the Magic Troop at all, which matches the features of the previous serial disappearances. Hmm. Were the victims of previous cases also chosen at random? That's how it seems to us, in any case. Apart from the fact that they were all young women of around the same age range, there really weren't any other connections between them. <sighs> okay then. I don't need to be so formal. If you do happen to see the missing girl, please be sure to contact us. It is of utmost importance that we get to the bottom of these disappearances. The investigation team has some new findings. Turns out there's an issue with the random number selector after all. See? I told you. What if the machine picked some big guy's seat? You think the murderer would have still made his move then? Sorry to interrupt, but we're helping Linny and Lynette with their side of the investigation. What were you saying about the number selector? 
There's something wrong with it? You're trying to help them? <laughs> That'll be a tall order. Linny used the machine to pick a random member of the audience during his performance, right? The lucky girl that later disappeared. Well, we thought there might be a serious problem with the machine, so we had it taken away for further inspection. It turns out that the seat number it picked wasn't random at all. The machine picks that same number every time. I'm sure you already know that you have to make a reservation in advance to get a seat, regardless of whether it's a trial or some performance. In other words, Linny knew who would be sitting where from the very beginning. Hmm. That much checks out. Linny reserved our seats for us, too. Bet you see why I was saying it'd be tough to make a case for Linny. Hmm. Even though it's bad for Linny's case, Paimon had better write it down. I see that you're investigating the area. Well, it just so happens that I'm interested too. If you find any new and interesting leads, be sure to share them with me, alright? We don't have too many thoughts yet. <laughs> then why don't I tell you my hypothesis first? The way I see it. And I'll start it with that loud thud. The thud? Oh, you mean the sound that happened during the countdown? Yes, exactly. It wasn't terribly loud, but I suspect that most people heard it. It's just that everyone was awaiting the results of Linny's trick with bated breath, so no one paid it much mind. But now that the incident has happened, the thud has become an important clue. Hmm, that makes sense. So, what do you make of it? I'm of the opinion that it may have been the sound of Linny's accomplice. Lynette, perhaps. Jumping atop the water tank, or something like that. And when the pyrotechnics went off, she cut the rope, sending the water tank crashing down. But wasn't the noise we heard too loud for that? Perhaps the balance wasn't right, leading to a particularly rough landing. Oh, that's true. Hmm. I suppose I must reconsider. Though, what was with that sound? Linny's still talking to the guards. It seems he'll have a lot of explaining to do. I think someone will be assigned to monitor us later, but that's all right. Linny's still talking to the guard. I think someone.
the murderer was. They must have made preparations well beforehand. This rope was obviously tampered with. People needed to register and reserve a seat for the show. <gasps> that, combined with this number selector, could allow you to pick a young lady instead of some old folky. Why would it be him? Hmm... How strange! Gosh, no wonder the serial disappearances never got solved. We all heard that noise, didn't we? Both of you, over here. I've been keeping an eye on you for a while now. Huh? You mean us? That's right. If I'm not mistaken, you're also among those who wish to cut down the thorns and pursue the truth. No? And by the looks of it, you're not from Fontaine. Well, you're right on the more about that one, but who are you? <laughs> Have you never heard of the Spina di Rosula? From mediating disputes and providing protection to solving conundrums, you name it, Spina di Rosula does it. And I, Navia, have the honor of being its renowned president. Though those who play by our rules call me boss. I'm Silver, her attendant. Pleased to meet you. And I'm Melus. Demoiselle's various daily needs and affairs are under my purview. Huh? Boss? Demoiselle? What gives with the names? <clears throat> well, I am the second generation president. Malus and the others are still used to my previous title. My apologies, Demoiselle. Should you prefer, boss, I will endeavor to use that instead. No, no need. You don't have to call me boss. Just Navia is fine. Okay, if you say so. Not that we're members of Spina di Rasula anyway. <laughs> All merely trifling details, never mind. Now, back to the situation at hand. That's right, I've always kept an eye on the serial disappearance cases. My interest stems from a matter back from my father's time. Judging from the look of things, I find Linny an unlikely mastermind. Really? We think so too! That's why we're looking for clues now! But... how did you come to that conclusion? Intuition, naturally. My unparalleled intuition. Farina sure was quick to point the finger at Linny without any decisive evidence whatsoever, wasn't she? But that's not uncommon for her. If you remember, the Justice had to interrupt her and ask if she was pressing charges just to keep her from getting carried away. Anyway, a trial begins the moment someone levels charges. And, of course, there was no way Farina was going to back down in that situation. Sounds more like you just don't trust the Hydro Archon. Well, what's your opinion? I must admit that she can be interesting at times, but liking her doesn't mean that I'll blindly agree with her. All right, I've answered your question. Now, it's time you answer mine. Wait a minute, did that answer count? Well, I say it does. But don't worry, you won't hear any pointless questions from me. In your opinion, do you think it's right to treat a trial like it's an opera? Um, well? And why would that be? <laughs> See, Silver and Malus? I told you they'd be different. Most astute of you, Demoiselle. I too think that the Traveler's response was most excellent. No matter how wonderful the script or how fervent the audience's expectations may be, the trials that go on stage here must be based in fact. And if that can be done, boss, then... Alright, that's quite enough, Malus. 
Anyway, I like your answer. You pass with flying colors. Now, I need to make some preparations, following which our joint investigation shall commence. You two shall be my assistants. Wait! Since when did we become assistants? Mm hmm? Oh, uh, well, I can be the assistant. Sure. Or your companion, if you like. I'm really not that fussy. Hm. That's more like it. Far be it from me to brag, but I believe that Demoiselle's intuition will be instrumental in uncovering the truth. You wish to save a friend from false accusations, and we wish to unravel the disappearances. In this sense, our goals are aligned. Hmm, you have a point. Huh. You're quite the talker, aren't you, mister? And what about you over there? What do you think? You seem like you've got something on your mind. I have nothing to add. Oh, alrighty then. We'll be making some preparations first. Uh, just be sure to let us know if they start revealing Linny's tricks. <laughs> Thanks! But no one can freely enter or exit the Opera House at the moment. If you wish to leave, you must register your identity with us first. Uh, no! We're not leaving! We're representing Linny and Lynette as attorneys, so we're investigating the case! Were you always guarding this entrance? Yes! After the Chief Justice gave the order, everyone coming in or out must undergo a strict inspection. So, the missing girl couldn't have left from here. At least, not from that point on. I doubt there was much opportunity then, either. How can you be so sure, hmm? Well, because I was in charge of security near the entrance at that time. I couldn't see Linny's performance from here, which was quite a shame. Just my luck. But still, I did not abandon my post. And I stayed put no matter how loud the applause was. If someone had so much as even approached the door, I would have noticed it, let alone if they had tried to leave. We Melazines are good at that sort of thing, you know. So, it's safe to say the girl couldn't have left through here. Alright, thank you for your help. This will be useful info. Speaking of that, I think magic shows would be very popular in Poisson. I can see that. Hmm. Maybe I should try to learn some magic. If I could make things disappear, cleaning my room would be a cinch. <laughs> Do you need not worry about such things, demoiselle. That falls under my duties. Oh. <laughs> right. Understood. Then I will be going with you. Just so you're aware, I will be monitoring your actions and making notes as necessary. Very good. Thanks for being so agreeable. I'd pull a rose out of my hat as a gift for you if I could. You may spare the pleasantries. I'm just doing my job. You've arrived. Uh, who's this? Me? <laughs> I'm Spina de Rosula's guardian angel. If you've got a problem, I've got the firepower. 
Sorry, I got a little carried away there. Call me Navia. I'm a partner of theirs, and will be helping investigate this whole situation. And these are my companions. Would you mind if they join as well? Hmm? Fine by me. Oh, new helpers? I would be most grateful. Well, let's just say we're tagging along. It's not every day you get to see the secrets behind magic performed on such a large scale. <laughs> I appreciate your kind interest. Come with me. We'll be heading below stage. Huh? Below stage? Yes, a world of secrets is hidden beneath this magic box, prepared specifically for this switcheroo trick. But before I reveal everything, you should have a look first. Notice anything strange here? I'm not trying to be dramatic. Remembering the details of a trick will help you understand the methods used to perform it more easily. Huh. Weren't there balloons and other decorations here? Where did all that go? Ah. Good eye. That said, you're still far from discovering the answer. Uh, the back? You mean the inside of the door? What's different about it? Paimon didn't notice anything. <laughs> Very good indeed. I thought you might not be able to catch that, given that you were sitting in the first row. The back of this door was patterned. Those patterns are now gone, replaced by a smooth wooden board. So, if you put two and two together, what do you get? <laughs> exactly! Alright, let's go. I'll tell you how it works as we head down. Oh, so there was a passageway under the magic box! <laughs> I knew you'd figure out most of it as soon as you saw this place. The two magic boxes are positioned right above the two entrances of the tunnel. See this flatbed trolley? The box with the lucky audience member in it would be shuttled over to the other side using the trolley. This trolley can raise and lower and even rotate, ensuring that the box will face in the right direction. I see. So that's the purpose of the box inside another box. Precisely. The inner box would descend after the audience member was put inside and be moved along the trolley, all while the outer box would remain on stage as if nothing had ever changed. So that's how you did it! Once the box was lowered, the trolley would store some energy through this device here, with which it would complete the rest of the steps. The audience member would only be able to feel some slight movements in the dark, and by the time she walked out, she would already be back on stage. Right! You were talking that whole time, and you even came out for a moment near the end! Ah, yes. A phonograph operated by Lynette was used to achieve that effect. My assistant and I had already scripted our conversation beforehand. When the countdown began, I had already gone to the opposite box via a tunnel using that ladder. And what about Lynette? Where was she? I was in the mezzanine space in the back of the box. Oh, interesting! That's how we were able to coordinate Lenny's lines with the assistant. And, by the way, I was the one who walked out of the box at the end. I mean, we are twins. All it takes is a change of clothes and no one can tell who's who. <laughs> and that's my favorite part of this trick. Only Lynette and I can perform it. So that's how it all worked! Wow, every detail you revealed was more amazing than the last! Lynette would briefly walk out of the box and then go back in, jumping into the tunnel and escaping before the box on the trolley could finish ascending. And then I walk out of the other box in the audience area, and the trick would be complete. The operative word here being would. But as you saw, Cal was in the box, not our audience member. She, on the other hand, mysteriously vanished. We really don't know how that happened. 
If not for that interlude, this would have been an astonishing trick. I probably never would have figured out how you pulled it off. And yet, to think that someone was able to use this magic trick to commit a crime. Could we have a look around? I think we can come up with some more leads. This is the scene of the crime, so Linny and Lynette are not permitted to stay here. I'll escort them back up. Yes, of course. No need to be so strict now. I won't disappear into thin air, you know. Thanks, everyone. We're counting on you. What's this? Looks like a hook tied to the end of a rope. Huh? There's all kinds of odds and ends here. Perhaps it was a prop for a different trick. But why would it have been left here? Whatever it is, let's make a note of it first. The floor is wet. Please be careful not to slip. Speaking of which, why would there be water here? Oh! Hi, my nose! It's one of those tricks where you pour water into a jug and then flip the jug over only for the water to disappear? And here's a broken vase! Huh. Did the trolley knock it down while moving? Uh... That can't be. The trolley moves along tracks from start to finish. It couldn't have hit the vase at this distance. Hmm. Let's note this down too and think about it later. <laughs> <laughs> 